This is Woodside Church Youth. Good morning, afternoon, evening and light, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us again for episode, what I think is nine of the Woodside Youth Podcast. I can't remember at this point. It's been so long. I've been saying to scrap it off for a long time, but Ollie keeps wanting to carry it on. But anyways, we move. This week, we have Hannah Clemens coming to talk to us. Ollie, what did we talk about this week? Well, it was the last one of the series, so we kind of wrapped up a little bit and we looked at... um, What did we look at? We looked at the whole, like area of who is our enemies we looked at how we can do conflict well and getting the right perspective on like what jesus did and what we can do how loving our enemies doesn't mean not taking action but it means not taking revenge and how prayer is also powerful in that and we also talked on about the difference of processing and the importance of having safe people so important some i've really taken from that but not allowing us to slip into gossip and slander behind people's back it's a good episode and hannah is back which is something we're all so excited for so definitely give it a whole watch and at the end, we have our practical notes, which are great this week. They so are. I reckon that everyone could put all three of them in their life in the, this week, and they would have a better week. Definitely. So, yeah, it was a good episode. And Kev, I'm sick of you using the same intro every time. You said last week, I think this must be episode eight now. I can't really remember. I've been saying to scrap it Did off, I say that so. last week as well? But Kev, yeah, you said it last week. But I still love you. Nothing's changed. We hope you enjoy the episode, basically. Yeah, we hope you have a great time listening to this week's episode. We hope you get a lot from it, and we'll see you in about five seconds. See ya. And welcome back to the Winter Youth Podcast. We're on episode nine now, and we're talking about loving your enemies. And we've got Hannah joining us for the first time on the podcast, which is great Woo-hoo. news. Woo. Um and yeah, so I'm excited. It should be a good episode. And as always, we're going to start with a would you rather from Kev. What have you got this week, Kev? Better be a good one, Kev. <laughs> I just have to <laughs> yawn. Um, uh, that wasn't... I'm not yawning because you're on. Uh, anyway. I hope um, it's not a flexor of me. Yeah, sure. So this week's would you rather. Imagine, yeah, imagine you're a teenager and you're in school, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So would you rather fart in front of your class when doing a presentation? Oh, gosh. Or run up behind and hug your friend who turns out is actually your teacher <laughs> oh oh man how many times i've done that in the supermarket thinking it was my mum as a kid that's bad that is that's sorry bad. Did, you've actually done this you hannah has had experience i've i've wow. had experience in a supermarket i had hugged a woman not recently of course hugged a woman Wait, who so you, okay. was a stranger and not my mum and i cried and i it's vivid it's a vivid memory oh, well, what, no, is, what did she do what did the woman did she just looked at me like obviously doesn't maybe didn't have a child. Who are you? Yeah. Not my child. Um, and oh, and along do? well, along came my mum. I just screamed at her. I was very upset about it. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of trauma in that in that voice. So it's, so it's pretty bad. But um, what I'd say is uh, remembering back the many years ago, of which, say for example, I was 16 at school. The idea of farting in front of my class is probably the most horrifying thought that ever there could be. So I will choose hugging my teacher, which I think could just become more of a joke than farting. I mean, does the fart have to have sound or could it be could it be silent? Because that, that changes no, it the game. To. It's either what? got sound or it stinks and everyone knows it. Oh, from no, you. no. Oh, no, you can't stink it out. I, but the thing is, it's like classic thing when you're doing the register at school and then she goes around and says your name. And you're like, yes, mum. Yeah, actually, the <laughs> <and everyone> goes, <laughs> Do you know what? I don't She's remember ever mom. doing that, but yes. And young people have done that, done that to me well. before. Call me mum, which I think is very funny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> powerhouse, call you mum. Or... No, I really? Like call me mum. Wait, people call you mum uh, in Powerhouse? No, no, no one's ever called me mum. Uh, <laughs> no, I've the other thing I was gonna do, The other one I was going to do was, um, would you rather like wave at someone and then turns out they're not waving at you, they're waving at someone behind you? Oh yeah, uh, we've all done that. Yeah, you know that Definitely. one. Uh, yeah, I was I did that once when I was sixteen and I went to the gym for the first time. And the first time oh, you go, like someone yeah. takes you in around the gym. No, but like someone, some guy takes you around, like to show you oh, the gym. And then the no. next day he was waving, and I just walked in and I thought he was waving at me. So I was like, like you need oh, you mate, remembered yeah. me from yesterday. Oh, this guy, this gym is sick. <laughs> and then I waved at him, and he was waving at this huge guy behind me. Oh, oh no. no! Oh, that is and embarrassing. Then... Yeah, I wouldn't want that. 
Yeah. Especially in a gym context. I'd love to play devil's advocate, but I can't. I don't think anyone would ever choose fighting in front of their whole class during a presentation. No. A presentation is bad enough with sweaty hands and you're just kind of shaking a bit of, stu- a bit of stuttering. That alone, fine. What would you do in that yeah, scenario? Yeah, you reckon? I reckon they'd, you'd forget a fart quicker than you'd forget hugging your teacher no. in front of No, people. I no. disagree. You reckon? Completely. No, do you not remember in like English GCSE? I don't know if you still have to do it like um, speaking and listening where you give a presentation. Oh, mine was awful. Yeah. I was so, so nervous. And the idea of like, I mean, I just don't think I could laugh at myself in the same way that I can now at 16. So I no, think no, now, no. I mean, I'd probably laugh and then get over it. Now, like yeah, then. Yeah. No way. Absolutely no way. So we're all hugging our teachers then. Absolutely. We're all hugging the teacher. Would, you'd forget a hug so quickly where it's like, you could carry a fart nickname for the rest of your school life, like realistically. Oh, and if you, you have I'd friends, I'd be like Farty Hannah. You don't want that. Yeah, yeah, Farty Hannah. Farty no, Hannah. You don't want I'll that take Huggy Hannah over Farty Hannah any day. What's the adult version, Hannah? Would you rather fart whilst doing a preach in front of the whole church, or <laughs> or hug a, <laughs> hug a new person in church from behind it? But you thought <laughs> from it was behind, like... thinking it's Josh. Oh no, I could to- I could totally do that. I think I could laugh that off and be like, oh, and by the way, I'm Hannah. Da, da, da. Like that thing doesn't that doesn't face <laughs> no, me. No 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 no. What you? Oh, you, oh, you mean like thinking it's Josh? <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Oh, um, I don't know what my husband would have to say about that. I don't know. Tough. I mean, not a tough question, Kev. But it's a good question. Well, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought, thought it was a good one. I thought that was a good one. I quite like that. There's a lot of torment. Toilet humour on this podcast, and I'm glad to have participated. Uh, that wasn't by nature. I don't know how that happened, to be honest. I think it is by nature. I think it is your nature. I, I have bowel problems. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Kev has bowel problems. Another thing to add to your prayer list, Kev's bowel problems. Uh, Bless you, Kev. Well, well, there you go. That is our Would You Rather for this week. We'd all rather hug a teacher from behind, as I'm sure you all would. If you would rather fight in front of a class, you are wrong. You are wrong. So... Uh, I hope you live knowing that. Or oh, you've got an excellent sense of humour that I did not have at 16 years old. So. Yeah, you have Credit some kind of you. confidence that's just <laughs> unrivaled to anyone on this podcast. So, like Ollie said, this week we have Hannah Clemens with us. And she did listen to The Preach, unlike some people on this podcast. <laughs> um, what she's going to do for us is sum The Preach in one minute. And I'm going to time you, Hannah, by the way. Oh my word, added pressure for the first one. Time me? As I in, I'll keep like... it to myself. Well done. I feel like I'm now like <laughs> in some sort of competition with myself. So that's you, don't, you don't have to do it in one minute, but I will be disappointed. Okay, so in competition with myself, um, yeah. Martin read from Matthew five thirty-eight to forty-eight about um, how we love our enemies, or according to the Bible that I'm now reading from, says Jesus teaches about revenge. Um, and he had three main points, which were wow, help, and yes. So the first bit, wow, um, was about acknowledging who. Um, God is and that God is total perfection and Jesus was total perfection Um, and the help bit is recognising that um, in relation to that we are not perfect and recognising that we get things wrong all the time and we absolutely cannot do that on our own and the yes bit is recognising that God is at work in us and it's the grace of God that saves us and that also changes us and understanding that it's a process um, within that and when we have the Holy Spirit in us um, mm-hmm. he's changing us into better people and he went on to talk about um, our reaction to people who hurt us um, and how do we react when people say stuff or spread rumours about us um, or who attack us he talked about attacking our property or, or attacking our liberty um, when people say things that are absolutely plainly not true about you um, how mm-hmm. you react to that and how essentially that points to jesus so how can we reflect jesus's love and forgiveness in our response to other people who do rubbish stuff towards us the end very good wow how long was that one minute 30 seconds exactly no oh, i thought it was shorter than that boo I, like, I mean it wasn't that's a like, decent amount of time yeah. it didn't feel like two minutes so you've done a good job okay I wasn't i'll take that getting bored halfway through <laughs> very good i think right from the start of the preach um Martin said he wasn't looking forward to it because it's a really tricky subject. Mm. But I also thought, oh, it's going to be quite tricky because enemies is kind of like it's a very strange word. I don't really know what to, what what I thought about enemies or what I thought about the whole thing. What did you guys think going into preach and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't know if I've ever used the word enemy. 
Um, and I certainly hope yeah. nobody has ever used that towards me. But I think it's maybe a term that we maybe struggle to relate to a little bit. Um, and mm-hmm. I think I wonder if enemies really, and mine kind of touched on it, as really the idea of somebody who hurts us um, and who makes life particularly difficult um, in lots yeah. of different ways, I think. And I think you could relate that in those different ways in very small ways from somebody whose company is quite difficult or maybe puts you down a lot um, to somebody who has spread a rumour about you, whether that's at school or outside of school, maybe that's within your family, um, or you always feel Mm. like everyone's out to get you or to embarrass you. Um, I think it could be on lots of different levels, but I I wonder if that term enemy is maybe harder to relate to because it's not necessarily part of our like normal vocabulary. I when I think of like the content or the topic of the speech, I think about like the people who hurt us or say stuff about us, all that stuff. When I think yeah. of like loving your enemies, I start thinking of like I don't know Al Qaeda or like all the uh, child yes, sex exploiters true. in yes. the world and yeah. all the like trafficking and all that, which yes. I guess is also relevant in all this scenario. I but, mean that is like, a whole yeah. other thing, isn't it? When yeah, you think about that's, it. That's another kind of like yes, and I think Martin thing. was probably honing it in slightly to those who are part of our everyday lives. But I mean, you could just do a whole other preach about loving those who persecute others. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I th- I think that that would probably be a whole other thing, which would be very interesting and very mm. very tough subject. Um, but mm, yeah, I yeah. I think what Martin was really trying to say is how do we love those who are around us who make life really hard. And who are out to get us in one way or yeah. another. I think that's kind of like what the whole series has been on. Like the way we look to Jesus actually doesn't have to be this massive, big, worldwide response. It actually, looking to Jesus means each of us doing our own little bits. Mm. And like, so it's as much as our enemies could be these big people, the persecutors. Like, I think if we're to take the most from this passage and the preach, I think it's about home in our own lives. And in that case, changing it almost to not, I don't think. We're softening it, but I think in terms of making it more relatable, it's loving the people that are difficult to love, yeah. mm. difficult to be around. Like you said, I think that's a step one of making it really apply to kind of like our lives and stuff, I think. Yeah, and I think everyone can relate to that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, th- I think whoever you are, I think, oh, I don't know if I've ever met anyone who hasn't come across a situation where either someone has really purposefully embarrassed them, said something behind their back, or just felt like they're making life purposefully difficult i don't know anyone who's who's not been in that situation before mm. obviously on mm. varying different scales so i think it's like really applicable to everybody when you guys think of like loving your enemies and we're talking about in this context where it's like those who hurt us or close to us mm. do you have like a certain group of people that you think of first so like, do you think of family first or do you think of friends first or do you think of colleagues first i mean i probably think more of situations than people right, yeah okay. i think something that i think is really important to work on as as like as Christians, but as people as well, is sometimes you have to look at the situations rather than the people. Yes. I think, so I think in terms of when you think about these kind of experiences, we are more likely to think of situations because, yeah. you know, there's there's room for, it, like, improvement and kind of, like, apologies and forgiveness. And I think that you then start to remove the act from the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, God removes the sin from us, the sinners. Mm-hmm. I think that's part of, kind of, when we talk about, I don't know where we're talking about, but when we talk about forgiveness and stuff, that's a part of the process. So I think it's hard to say to answer, mm. or I think of these specific person. Sometimes you might have that specific person that might because it's ongoing and yes. or there's still stuff going on. But yep. I think it's not a bad thing to look at situations because you've almost removed that from the person. Yes, and I suppose mm. if your general understanding at the beginning of this is that all have fallen short of the glory of God, then you're coming yeah. into it going, I too am in that category. And I'm not coming into yeah. this situation arrogantly assuming that I know best, but also going, I too am a sinner and I too fall short of the glory of God. And I'm coming into any situation that I go into, recognising that and recognising that for the other person in this situation and going, OK, yeah. let's face this together as two sinners or as other people who are also getting this wrong and try yeah. and work from that basis. And I think it just removes the whole idea of the person in the right and the person in the wrong. Even mm. though obviously there will be times where there is someone in the right and is someone in the wrong, and you're both mm. going, no, both of us are on the same level pegging, and yeah. and and coming into it from that angle. I think that's a really helpful place to start. In the same way that Martin started this whole thing by recognizing that Jesus is perfect and we are not, and is essentially doing yeah. exactly that in going, he's perfect, I'm not, and also is the person who is in this situation with me too. They too yeah. have fallen short. 
And I think that's a really helpful way to come into it. Yeah, I think, like, as Luke said, like, there, it's not like there's Jesus, Christians, us, and then bad people. Absolutely. It's Chris, Christians and people, people who have all fallen short, and, you know, we need to look to Jesus. And, you know, that's when, in Martin's three words, he said one of the key three words when we're looking at this area is help. Like, we need to go yes. to Jesus. We need help because it's about getting that we've all fallen short, but also recognising that the sum of the amount where this comes from is it starts with grace. Yeah. And God's grace and mercy will like help us to be able to go through this process of loving our enemies yes. and dealing with that and i yeah. think um the way like if i think back to when i'm in school and someone did something wrong to someone the whole the environment or the culture is like you have to get your you have to get back at that yes and i think we are kind of self in that environment aren't we where someone wrongs us or someone does something wrong yeah. retaliation is almost definitely necessary yeah even in like a prank situation yeah. you're like then getting someone back i think the whole idea is that we grow up in a situation or even with like banter really we're like even not in a kind of um a mutual way where you're like i'm not actually trying to get revenge on someone because i don't like them i'm just getting them back because they did something to me like yeah. our whole yeah. the whole way we're taught all of that is that like it's a to and fro thing mm. and i think actually essentially what we're saying here is it, it isn't that at all actually um and there mm. should be no yeah. fro so when someone does wrong as we think straight away why should i be the bigger person or what like if they've wronged me then why do i need to go back like it's not in my place is it like yeah if they wrong me isn't it up to them to figure out what they've done wrong yes and i guess that's a bit where martin's third point comes in his like yes word which is like god is at work in me see that little <laughs> transit where it's like yeah he's changing us through that and making us not think in that perspective but in different yeah, um, yeah. and the importance of recognizing the holy spirit there and going, mm. actually, it's the Holy Spirit constantly changing us. This isn't a, oh, yeah. became a Christian. Yep, I am changed. Yeah. I am fulfilled. Um, yeah. But this is a growing process. And I speak for myself, but I'm sure you'd say the same thing, that this is a lifelong journey of being changed Absolutely. by God. And each situation that you face and each problem that arises or each difficulty that comes and you recognise the Holy Spirit more in you and you go... Yeah, actually, I dealt with that way better than I might have done three years ago. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's really, really important to give the Holy Spirit credit here. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I think, you know, we're talking about the whole cultural to and, to and fro, and like this whole cancel culture at the moment is mm. as soon as something does something that, you know, almost is about, I think as people, we can almost take having a different opinion as like a direct attack on us. Yeah. And I think yeah. the culture of all that kind of stuff is we can't, follow that culture we're called to be different martin pre quoted dave devish and said be different like, i can't remember what the actual quote i've is. got it dave he said surprise those who hurt you be a christian yeah and it's about the fact that we are surprising people means that we are going to have to approach things differently mm. like we we are meant to be the person that don't throw it back yeah i think and that could that can be tricky and that can be difficult but that's when we go jesus help like the holy spirit i need you to help me in this situation yeah so the fact that we're not doing it by ourselves also makes me a lot more comfortable and happier when talking about this because it's accepting that we can't do it and we're not meant to do it by ourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. I do think at this well. point it's really helpful to mention and think, this is something I've been pondering, is that even through some of those wrong situations, it's still right to pursue justice. And I think it's not about Absolutely, ignoring yeah. things. So it's not about, you know, when we're talking about, oh, like I've just said about toing and froing, like they're not being a fro, as it were. But it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you can't still pursue the truth and pursue justice in that situation it just means there's no revenge and yeah. seeking justice isn't revenge seeking justice yeah, is no, still seeking the truth and i think that there's yeah just to be clear that's not what we're saying here yeah i think it's yeah. like taking a step away from self-righteousness to yes. more of a whole righteousness yes so i think something that's probably really relevant to this is that um there will be situations that happen in life which which make you deal with this straight on even though sometimes there's yeah. other things bubbling away in the surface you will hit certain situations at some point that will make you go okay I've actually got to tackle this and um about a year ago and um, we had a situation which absolutely made us do this and I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever connected to the bible in such a personal way as I did during that time and I came across some 59 completely randomly um which basically described exactly the situation we were in. Um, and it starts by saying, deliver me from my enemies, O God, protect me from those who rise up against me. And it goes on to describe how that was happening to um, to David. And um, 
It says they return at the night time, snarling like dogs and prowling about the city. Um, see what they spew from their mouths. They spew out words, um, swords from their lips. Um, and it goes on, it finishes by saying, but I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will sing of your love. And it was just gave me such hope. And I was like, oh my goodness, this psalm has completely described everything that was happening. Basically, we were going through yeah. like a really, really rubbish time. People were treating our children really badly. Um, saying, spreading all kinds of rumours about us. Um, really, really nasty stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But my hope is in that. In the morning, I will sing of your love. I will sing of your strength because there is always hope in the morning, even when the night is really rubbish, even when people are saying yeah. terrible stuff, spewing out this terrible stuff that cuts like swords. In the morning, I will sing of your love. And I think that there's always a hope. And like I was saying before about we should still pursue justice. That didn't mean that me and Josh didn't go to the police. That meant we went to the police. But what it meant is we didn't take revenge. And oh yeah. boy, was I tempted to take revenge like never before. And yeah, um, absolutely. like properly real temptation to, to just really, I mean, it was just awful. But actually mm. our understanding is that God is sovereign and in control. This isn't my right to seek revenge. He's in control of all of that. My goodness yeah. is to seek justice, always seek justice, but always to love which in that circumstance didn't mean making banana bread and taking it around to their door. What it meant is don't do anything. Yeah. I'm loving you by not doing this and giving into temptation. And I think that can be really yeah. applicable to lots of different stuff. We seek justice and we love quickly. I think one thing that I wanted to touch on as well is you said, we talked about the importance of having someone to talk to mm. in um, that time. I think processing situations we're in is really important. Yeah. I think that's part of being able to love our enemies well. But I think also, equally alongside that, we can easily fall into gossip or talking behind someone's back or being, I would guess it would call being slanderous. Yeah. Um, like, what do we think the difference is and what do we, how do we think we manage that well? Because on one hand, it's important to process, but we also shouldn't be gossiping and talking behind people's back. And like, well, how do we think we approach that and deal with that well? I think it's important to acknowledge that there will be what I would call safe people in your life. And I mean that just as much as a, an adult here, that, yeah, that yeah. saying like, actually I recognize that there are like two or three people that I have in my life who I could feel like I could probably say anything to, and that would be free from their judgment that they would correct yeah. me when I've said something wrong or just listen to me, like thrash it all out and then go, I'm not sure you've heard that quite right. Or I think you've misinterpreted what happened there. Um, yeah. And are willing to pray for me in that situation. And what mm. I'd say is it can be quite difficult as a teenager to recognize who those people are. And it may take some difficult situations to work that out. And that's probably yeah. to be expected and, and recognise that this person is my safe person. This person is not going to repeat this. It comes free from their judgment. And I know that they'll be praying. They'll want good for me out of this because they believe I'm yeah. a good person and they, they want good for me. They're not judging me or believing the stuff that I'm saying that's false or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think it can be really hard to to do that and there may be some hurt and you might find yourself in actually a difficult situation in the process of recognising that. But actually, um, it's important that you have at least two people in your life who you think, yes, I would call them, oh yeah, my version of safe people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I was going to say that when someone hurts us, um, and it goes from a personal thing, so we say we talk to someone about it and say how we're feeling about it, and it goes from something that's personally attached to, and then we start like having resentment and loathing for this person which then develops into talking about stuff about them, which has nothing to do with how they've yes. affected you. Yes. And now goes into just yes. the way they are mm. and the person they are. And I think it's watching yeah. when you're about to do that, that bit when it starts going from, okay, this isn't about me anymore. This is now just about that person's actions and what they do. I'm just having a yeah. rant. I'm yeah. just now I'm yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. talking about someone who's not done anything to me this time. And going, yeah. whoever this safe person I've spoken to will shut me up when I've said enough and also isn't going to tell anybody else about it because yeah, they, we recognise this is just here and everybody needs somewhere they can feel safe to talk um, that yeah. isn't gossip and is just seeking help. And I think sometimes people fall the other way and think, 
oh, that means I can't tell anyone. And actually, it's, oh, it is okay to tell someone this kind of stuff, mm. but it just needs to be the right person. So, as always, we're going to finish off the podcast with some, just a few sentences of, pra- of practical advice that you can take away and be like, actually, I'm going to put Hannah's one into, into play this week, I'm going to put Kate's one into play this week. And we're taking these from the sermon or from the discussion we've just had on, on the podcast. So we're just going to go around. Kev, what have you got this week for us as your practical advice? Um, I think this week I'm going to steal what Hannah does and listen to music when you're feeling in a sort of mood or whatever. Try to find those songs which yeah. kind of highlight your mood and then sing the truth that is in the songs out on nice yourself yeah, into, your, into your situation. So that'll be my golden nugget. Nice. I like that. Nice, Kev. <laughs> my one, I mean, very, very practical find your safe people work at building those relationships um as Hannah said it might be a bit of a rocky road to start with but finding your safe people will set you up really well yeah great and mine is turning the other cheek um means not seeking revenge but there's still an action and that action should always be justice and and loving through justice great they were three perfectly short pieces of practical advice so (laughs) I hope you've all enjoyed the podcast. Hope you've enjoyed having Hannah on. Yay, she I've loved so this. Well. So Hannah's done so well. Uh, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of the week. This will come out on Thursday. So have a great Friday tomorrow. And we'll see you next time. Bye. See you later. Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit woodsidechurch.com or follow us on social media.